Hey guys, this is Ekinjun1. Today we'll show you all the rich features and improvements that I found after experiencing this amazing update, One UI 3.0. Overall, it is solid, super smooth, and a great animation response that definitely makes the user experience refreshing. The lock screen clock is repositioned so you can tap it using one hand easily. After clicking, you will get all the notification in an organized manner. The quick panel looks much better now with transparent effect, however it would have been cool to have an option to disable it. The settings icon is repositioned at the very top which is hard to reach with one hand. Samsung Music introduces some cool features like displaying the Bluetooth name that is receiving the audio output. On the right, if you click on it, it directs you to the media section and you can easily choose the audio output either on device or Bluetooth devices. Also, you get a music share option and smart view all in one, which is very convenient. The volume rocker looks wonderful and easy to adjust with one hand rather reaching on the top. Clicking on three dots, you get all the volume options. On the top left, that is a live caption. You can simply press on it to toggle it on or off. By double tapping, you can turn on or turn off the screen. Updated Pascot UI? Well, it would have been better if Samsung could come up with their own design or at least modify it a bit more. The lock icon in Pascot is literally identical to iOS UI. On Samsung Messages, you have a recycle bin that is very useful. If you deleted certain messages or by mistake, you can always recover it. In addition, all the messages in recycle bin automatically deletes after 30 days or you can manually delete them instantly. On contacts, the icons are updated and all the buttons and options are at the bottom much better than before. On the phone app, go to settings. You will then find called background. You can change the layout to center or to the side. You can add image or video from gallery as a background when calling. Here are a couple of cool wallpapers that I have used. While you are at call, the background blurs a bit which makes it look amazing and simple. On the camera, when you click on the screen to focus, you will see an updated autofocus tool. Previously, we had longer brightness slider and was much better positioned at the bottom. However, with this update, it doesn't seem so user-friendly, but I'm impressed that you could keep fixed focus simply by pressing the lock icon rather than holding. On One UI 2.5, there was always a noticeable stutter when switching the camera modes. However, it isn't the case on One UI 3.0. It is very smooth and responsive. Launching the gallery app, you will notice that all the options are at the bottom right. Going in a recycled bin, you can see that now it has a remaining days indicator for each files before it gets deleted, which is fantastic. So now I'm gonna randomly edit a photo. While editing a picture, you will find a new shadow option. Also, after editing a picture, the original file automatically gets deleted, which is kind of an odd. It would have been better if there was an option for us to decide what we could do with the original file after editing. Hopefully the upcoming update fixes it. When you set an image as a wallpaper, you get more options than before. You have always on display and call background. One of the best features of Android 11 is definitely the ability to stop apps from accessing your phone when you're not using those apps for a while. This is a great privacy improvement, but I hope Samsung could add an indicator for camera and mic when it's being used like on the latest iOS. On the settings, then you click on wallpapers, then you will find wallpaper services. You will then see a bunch of new wallpapers that gets updated every two weeks, which is amazing. And let us see some of those high quality wallpapers on Galaxy Note 10.
As Finder, you have the new suggestion section. If you click on hashtag what's new, it will show you all the new features for that particular update. On notification settings, you have these two options of pop-up style to pick from. You can keep it in brief with edge lighting or detailed. With brief, you have a couple of cool options. You can set brief feature on selected apps or all. Then we have brief pop-up settings. Click on color by keyword. This is a very useful feature, especially when you want to get attention for a specific name or word. By adding certain words, you can choose the color for each words. On Do Not Disturb Me, you have more useful options. On Exception section, click on Apps. And if you click on one of the apps, you have full control on what to receive or add them in Do Not Disturb Me mode. As you can see, there are a bunch of options just from a single app. On Advanced Settings, click on Floating Notification. You then have this amazing bubbles and smart pop-up view option, which is very cool. Let's say you were surfing through YouTube and you got a message in form of bubblehead. When you click on it, you can quickly type while it is in pop-up window. You can resize the window as well, but I guess from the bottom doesn't work so you can resize from the top. You can minimize the bubble head or you can view it in full screen. Or you can use it in split screen mode. Another cool feature is the ability to view the notification history in full detail, like recording all the actions taken and the time it occurred. After going to the settings and clicking to my Samsung account, you can see it looks a lot better and organized. You get to see all the connected devices to the account, all the sync apps, and a sign out button. Now going into the connection, then hotspot configuration, you will notice that you have a new option that is changing the band from 2.4 GHz to 5 GHz for faster internet speed, while the rest of the settings are the same. On the display screen resolution, Samsung updated the UI and giving more info about battery, quality, and performance for each resolution. On navigation, when you slide the sensitivity, it will display a blue guide bar on both sides to give you a better idea of the exact sensitivity level. You can now display Hijri calendar beside the Gregorian calendar. Here's a demo. On advanced features, there are two new options, the Samsung DAX and Android Auto. If you want, you can toggle off Samsung DAX. As for Android Auto, you can configure it however you want. With one hand mode, you can drag the window up or down and resize it. On Video Enhancer, you can now control on which specific media apps you want the Video Enhancer to be turned on. This is very useful especially when you need it for YouTube to enjoy the quality, but not for your personal or offline videos to conserve the battery life. On Samsung App Settings, you can change settings for each in here rather than launching every single app to configure it. If you have got work profile or organization apps on your personal device, then I advise you to do the following. This is so the IT department does not have any way to access your phone data. On accessibility, you get an organized look and a new feature, TalkBack. It is a feature that provides spoken feedback without looking at the screen. Here's a demo. TalkBack on. Settings 3 of 5, enlist 5 I One UI home, Android on, setting, settings 3 of 5, enlist 5, speak passwords, passwords on. On device care, there are a lot of goodies. First up, I will click on the graphic icon, it will show me the reports of all the app crashes with dates. You might be wondering why this many apps. Well, it is due to bugs and it is expected as this is the first beta. 
So we have the resource history in automatic and manually. Then you have the option to automatically optimize the device and a note of advice for battery health. Auto optimization settings, nothing has changed here so we'll move on. On the battery, when you click on the graph, it will show you the time since its discharge. And also you can see the screen on time with ease without manually calculating or estimating it, which is a big bonus. On power saving mode, now you can enable or disable it without the worry of loading time, which normally takes 10-15 to 15 seconds. As for the last option, it is if you need maximum power saving mode. On more battery settings, you have enhanced processing, which is basically the same as high performance. S Pen Alert was already introduced, however it has been improved. The moment your S Pen is further from your phone, it alerts instantly, while previous update had a slow reaction. Now the next three Samsung apps may not be part of One UI 3 features, as my Note 9 running One UI 2.5 has got the same features except My File app. However, I will showcase it as it has recently been added. If you go to the settings, then appearance, you will see height status bar. So you could enjoy the full screen experience and if you want to see the status bar, simply scroll down. On my files, you have an option to put certain files as your favorite. On Reminders, you can now sync with Microsoft Teams and Outlook. Amir requested me to make a video about new features of S Pen running One UI 3. Unfortunately, there was nothing new except improvement on S Pen Alert. Regardless, we'll show you the settings very quick and we'll wrap up the video from there. Anyways guys, thanks for your support. Do like, subscribe and comment below what kind of videos you want to see next. Wishing you a fantastic day. Peace.